What's up gamers and welcome back to another vlog. We're starting off in the garage again. Why? Because we're not playing any games today. Boy, stay tuned. Let's get it. All right. We're not playing any video games today, but I do think you guys will still enjoy today's episode of vlogging with Tuji. <laughs> Started off the channel vlogging, and now I absolutely hate it. It is the most awkward thing you can possibly do in your entire life, but stopped at the dub today. Got a couple parts for the R36 project. You guys may know about that, some may not, but today I'm gonna be installing a couple of things, and while I'm doing that, I'm thinking I'll just kind of walk you guys through the history of that car. Everything that thing has been through in uh, probably a pretty short video, but nope. first, we actually have to pull the car in the garage. All right, we're trying two camera angles today to see if that makes it a little bit more interesting. It's definitely gonna make my life an absolute nightmare editing it, but it's for the views, man. It's for the views. I realize this is probably the dumbest thing ever, but I do keep that car under lock and key. Cause you know, you never know, it is Iowa, but maybe someone's having a rough day and they wanna steal a car. I want to apologize too for any heavy breathing clips or grunting. I'm not exactly in the peak physical condition. Hi, Mr. Buddy. What do you think? <laughs> Will she still start? That's the real test. Oh, baby! Whew. All right. I don't want it to... Yeah, I know. There's an airbag fault. I don't want it to warm up too much. So we're going straight into the garage. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, let's shut the garage door too so my neighbors don't think I'm a freak walking around with a GoPro strapped to my chest. All right, so this bad boy, Billy, right here is my 2004 Volkswagen R32, but I kind of blew the original engine up. So now it has a 2008 Passat 3.6 liter VR6 instead of the factory 3.2 VR6. Whoo, girl. So the main things we're gonna be doing today, of course, talking about the history of the car while doing these things, but we have to replace the pollen filter because it's kind of disgusting. We have to install windshield wiper arms and blades on, you know, the windshield. And then we just have to do an oil change. I still haven't changed the oil since the engine was built. So I would imagine that's probably not the best thing for it. So we're gonna do that today as well. Like I said, I blew up the original 3.2. I was on my way home from Oksana's first apartment, old, old apartment, and I saw something in the road. It was definitely huge. It was enormous, a big like piece of metal something. My dumb self, I decided that I was just gonna smash into it because what could go wrong? Driving a lowered car, didn't even think twice about it. Went straight over the thing and uh, smash my oil pan, proceeded to then drive. Maybe it was less than a mile, but still, uh, if you smash your oil pan, don't continue driving, pull over. <laughs> I was 100% not using my noodle that day. I took my friend Spencer's Grom to O'Reilly's. Luckily they had an oil pan in stock, so I got a new oil pan, uh, did an oil change as well, got a new filter. Yeah, look at this thing. Look at that. There's a fly in it. It's disgusting. Super gross, junk. Got the freshy right here. I've actually never done a pollen filter on this car, ever. Then again, I only owned it for a short time before it exploded. And so I changed the oil pan, thought everything was totally fine, thought everything was good 
And uh, come to find out, there was this mysterious ticking noise <laughs> from the engine bay, which turned out to be I spun a rod bearing. Kept driving it though, because I was poor, still am, and, uh, and couldn't afford an engine reassembly. And so after kind of just continuing to drive it, I was not street racing my friend Mason and I, I didn't blow it up on the interstate. Again, continued to drive because had to get to where I was going. Left it at his house for uh, an ungodly amount of time. His dad was probably pretty pissed. Got a tow truck, brought it to where I worked at the time, which ironically was Volkswagen. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know if this is right. Kind of looks right. I'm thinking that this flap might hang over though. So got a tow truck, towed it back to Volkswagen, had the master tech there start to, you know, just kind of tell me what was wrong with it, what I did, what I goofed up on. And lo and behold, I basically cooked the entire engine, which as you can imagine is not good. So after that whole fiasco, I decided that I was going to, well, actually the master tech at the time, he was working at Audi and he kind of convinced me, you know, instead of doing a three, two swap, why don't we just do a three, six swap from a Passat? And I said, you know, that sounds sick. And so that's what we did. I bought a three, six from a 2008 Passat and the swap was underway. The first thing we had to do was of course, oh, this goes the other way. <laughs> Uh, the first thing we had to do, of course, was disassemble the original engine and just kind of verify that, yes, it is in fact blown up. Get the new engine in, get that one rebuilt, make sure it's all fine and dandy. And now here we are. We have the car in the garage. It does run. It doesn't run very well, but it does run. And you're probably wondering, why did it take so long? Kind of had people agree to take it on and then back out. And then they were like, no, I'll actually, just kidding, I'll do it. Yada, 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 which isn't their fault. Normally it was some sort of issue at home or issue with just scheduling and stuff like that. So it sat for probably a year. I was thinking, God, this thing's never gonna get done. Nobody wants to do it. If they do wanna do it, they have to back out for whatever reason, or they want too much money to do it, which keep in mind, again, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not super well off, you could say. The only thing that needed done, the only thing that was left was the engine harness. But the problem with that was I couldn't find anyone local to try to pick apart the harness and basically rebuild it and make it work for this car. So Oksana finally talked me into, you know, why don't you just do it yourself? I was like, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the know-how to be able to do this stuff myself. But uh, after some looking around, I ended up finding a company in New Jersey called Eurowise, who uh, specializes in custom-made harnesses for engine-swapped vehicles, which, again, this one was. So I got in touch with them. They were able to build me a harness. Everything was cool. The only problem was they didn't really ask me enough questions on what exactly the swap was. So they did make me a harness. It did work for the most part, but a bunch of the connectors, I actually had to end up changing back to whatever the heck it was. Some stuff was three, two, some stuff was still the three, six, and it was just this whole ordeal. But in the span of probably two weeks or so, I was able to actually finish the harness myself, get it running. I'm not a very mechanically inclined person, you could say. So this was definitely my first triumph, really, when it comes to, when it comes to cars. Otherwise, I was the type of dude that was just putting like aftermarket air filters in cars and pretending my car was super fast when it was pretty well bone stock. But this one, this one was different and I am super, super proud of where it is right now, but it's not at the point yet where I can daily drive the car. So after we get everything installed today, I should be able to actually daily this and drive it and tote it around town looking all cool and whatever, but I don't have wiper blades. So I do have to do that. That's kind of something that, what if it rains? What do I do? Kind of need those. So pollen filter done. 
I realized that was a, a grueling task. It took very, very long. But uh, next we're gonna do wiper arms and blades, and then we're gonna move on to the oil change. And then at the very end, I'm gonna swap out these wheels for the much cooler, much wider, much more dope 3SDM 0.06s. But I do have to eat. Oxana so kindly made us quesadillas and beans. So I'm gonna go chow down and I'll see you guys here in just a minute. All right, we're back, baby. Got a belly full of beans and cheese and tortillas and all things that are nice. So we got wiper blades and, oh, they also gave me some koozies, which are pretty sick. I guess that's just like a new promotional thing that they're doing. We got wiper blade nuts and the little caps. And then, oh yeah, I got a rear wiper too. I don't really need that, I guess, but we'll, we'll put it on anyways. And then we have, of course, the arms. I have to stop showing everything down here because I realize you guys can't see it. I used to, I've been out of the game for so long, I used to be able to tell the part number apart and, uh, and kind of figure out which one's driver's side, which one's passenger side. But like I said, been out of the game too long. Honestly, don't remember now. So <laughs> this should be fun. Oh my God, this. That right there, that's why you buy brand new OE parts from the dealer, baby. And I'm not just saying that because I used to work there. I, I genuinely mean that. So yeah, if the, if the long one goes over here, then it would have the most range of motion, I guess. So that would make sense, right? Okay, so we'll just place that one there. Super gentle, definitely not gonna crack my windshield in this video at all. No, 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 no I, I probably will. Which then, great. Another thing to try to pay for with my YouTube money, baby. It's not very good. I can tell you guys that. Yeah, that looks right, I think. Cause then if you, oh Jesus. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna crack my windshield. Safe light repair, safe light replace. If I pull this up, yeah, that's how it's done. All right, dope. Let's get some nuts and uh, we'll get her secured on there. Also, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you're basically willing to watch a grown man struggle to try to put wiper blades on his car. That's very cool. All right, looks like a 13 mil. Honestly, it'd be so much easier with the hood off. I'm gonna try to install it actually with this popped up. Does that make it easier? Oh yeah, girl. Finney's outside. I'm assuming he has. Buddy, what doing? Thought he had like an itch or something. I guess he's just barking at nothing. If any of the technicians that formerly worked with me see this video, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, that's not working. Let's just pull it out the other way. Through the hole and down and done. Okay, it is not supposed to go down this far, so we are probably gonna have to adjust that, but wipers on, way less of a chance now of uh, exploding our windshield, so that's nice. God, I am kind of treating this like a tutorial though now, aren't I? Now that I've already gotten through the, the history of the car, I'm just kind of going full tutorial mode. I can't help it, you guys. Okay, I think I got them backwards. <laughs> yep, definitely got them backwards. Long boy should go on the short side, short boy should go on the long side. I don't typically, you guys know, I don't typically make videos like this. So it'll be interesting to see. Oh, get there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see how, how low they're sitting? They shouldn't sit on this. Oh, you probably can't see that. They shouldn't sit on this cowl. They should actually, sh <laughs> I almost swore. They should actually sit on the windshield itself. So we are gonna have to do a little bit of adjustment all right, that seems like where it should be, I think. Seems good, right? Well, we don't know until we actually get the things moving. Oh, baby. Oh, babe, can you guys even see that? That looks great. They are almost hitting each other when they go back down. But you know what? I think that's, I think that's good enough. I don't even have any washer fluid in the car to begin with to be able to see if the nozzles work. Also, I don't think I even have the nozzles installed. I don't. <laughs> there should normally be nozzles 
up in the, the, I guess, top side of the hood. There we go, dude. We got some freaking wiper blades. Super sick. All right, GoPro uh, done got dead on me. So now we're gonna just stick with this camera, but I'm gonna hit you guys with a little time lapse, jacking up the car, draining out the oil, and all the cool bits. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. This is, unfortunately, as high as I'm going to be able to get the car, which really doesn't leave me much room to perform an oil change. So that will be very interesting as well. I gotta buy a new floor jack, guys. This one just sucks. It literally goes like four inches. The real test is if this is going to be able to fit underneath of the car. Oh, just barely. We're in business, ladies and gents. And you know what? Since I'm taking these wheels off anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now also. I should have broke the lugs when I was on the ground still. And for those of you saying, dude, just get an impact. I don't have an impact. I got a cordless drill. Let me see if I can get that to work. No, because it's half inch dr Oh, man. Man. Will it work? Not a chance. God dang it. They're broke loose. Thankfully, the e-brake is up, so I don't have to use the wheel chalk technique for the rear, but I do still have to do one more side. Oh God, oh geez, oh I'm out of shape. Honestly, I'm so glad that I don't have the GoPro on so you guys can't hear my heavy breathing. You probably still can, maybe just not as well. Ooh, these are a little flat, yo. Why do I still have my GoPro thing on? It's just making me hotter. All right, so I'm sweaty mess, but all the wheels are off, which is awesome. It's gonna make my life a lot easier, but also I'm gonna put that wood block on the actual jack, try to jack up the front a little bit more. That way I can actually get underneath the thing. It's definitely a little bit more manageable now. Still a pain in the butt, but uh, I think it's time to actually drain the oil out of this thing. Well, it's not a 17. <laughs> I highly doubt it's a 21. Do I have anything in between that range? I have an 18. It better not be anything bigger than an 18 because that's what I got. Oh, thank Lord. Please don't make a mess. Don't, don't be mean to me. And I don't want to get my camera dirty. Especially oil, that's not good for lenses. All right, three, two, one. Look at that. I'm like a freaking professional or whatever. That's pretty sick, dude. Straight in the center of the drain. Oh, I remember why I hate doing oil changes at my house. It's so dirty, sweaty. This video is kind of just, also, again, if you're still watching, freaking legend. Thank you. Um, but also, this video is kind of just turned into me complaining a whole lot, sweating a whole lot, and things just overall not really going my way. But you know, that's cars. That's, uh, that's the name of the game. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. You guys probably can't see it on the camera very well, but the oil color isn't that bad for being, you know, driven a couple miles here and there right after the engine has, has been built. That's not terrible. Lighting's not very good. Do I have a light out here? I doubt it. Yeah, definitely don't have any lights. So unfortunately, this is as good as, as, good as it's gonna get. <laughs> I went full country mode there. All right, let's back this up just enough. There we go. 
I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna need the oil filter wrench for this, which Volkswagen specialty tool. I don't own one, so this should be fun. Well, I found some of my dad's old farm and oil filter wrenches from, from back in the day. I don't think either one of them are going to fit. Yeah, there's no way that's gonna work. Let's try the bigger one. Again, <laughs> not a chance. Is there any way that I can get it off my hands? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. But I could get a pipe wrench. Oh, this sucker should do it. <sighs> this is not at all what you want to do, ladies and gents. These are plastic. They're very brittle, and it will probably break if I do this. No way, dude. I'm just going to strip this thing. Still continues to try. <laughs> what about a small wrench? Oh, oh. Your boy, it's your boy. Now the only problem is, how do I get it back on? <laughs> because I do still have to put it back on. I suspect there are going to be a lot of oil off of this. Woo! Yeah, that's a lot of oil. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Please Lord, tell me I didn't get any on the camera. That would not be ideal. All right, and now I gotta take this sucker out. There we go. All right. I gotta go clean this off with some brake clean. All right, so while the oil continues to drain from the engine, I have to find, here it is, our new oil filter and oil drain plug. It's very, very important, especially on these Volkswagens. These are one-time use drain plugs, so you wanna make sure you're replacing that every single time. Again, this is not a tutorial. I don't know why, I just can't not treat it like a tutorial, but I need a little pick for this. Got my pick. Now, these actually have a seal ring right here. Uh-oh, sounds like someone's home. Hey, baby girl. I'm filming a video. Are you? Yeah. All right, so old seal ring, now removed. Now, it's important when you are replacing this, again, not a tutorial, make sure you lube up this seal ring because that is quite literally the only thing that's sealing this to your, I guess, oil block. So I'm not gonna use any new oil for this. I'm actually gonna go use some old crusty gross stuff. So just a little bit of oil on my index finger and thumb, and we are going to lightly coat this all the way around. Doesn't have to be like dripping wet in oil. Flip this puppy over. Also, Doug's here. Hi. Doug's doing things in the, in the garage. Push that all the way down to the base, and then boom. Done. Now we just have to put the filter on, which again, super easy. It's got little tabs on it right there. It just clicks into place. Boom. That's it. New oil filter ready to go in and we got our drain plug. So this we can just throw away. I keep saying, Doug, I'm like, this is not a tutorial, but yeah, I'm treating it like it's a tutorial. Yeah, look at this tiny like, rabbit. Anyone's gonna follow look how, that? Look how cute it is. It's so small. Look how cute Hems is. So now that we have our new oil filter, I'm gonna unfortunately crawl underneath the car again. Put this in, pop in the new drain plug, and we'll be ready to rock BK Broiler. I'm not in the shop. I mean, I'm not trying to be, but... <laughs> See, this would be so much easier if I had a cameraman. Where's your gimbal? Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm just hoping, since I don't have the correct oil filter wrench, I'm just hoping that I have it, quote unquote, torqued to spec. Why you have to torque a oil filter cap to spec is beyond me, but... That's what Volkswagen does. And same thing with the drain plug. I'm just gonna shove it in there and call it a day. Well, this is awesome. The drain plug they gave me is a 19. Oh no. I don't oh, have no. a 19. What, you don't have a 19? No, I have an 18. I have a 19. Uh, I'm trying to get this done like now. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, the new drain plug they gave me is actually a 19 instead of an 18 millimeter. So I don't have a socket that is a 19, so now I get to use a crescent wrench. <laughs> oh. Actually, all things considered, that works surprisingly well. All right, GoPro already died. Now this camera's about to die. I have one battery left. I don't know if I'm gonna make it there, but oil fill spot right here. All we have to do is, uh, is fill it with our new 5W40, I think. Not a sponsor. Castrol Edge, nothing but the best. I don't remember the fluid spec on this either, how much I actually need. So I'm just going to periodically check the dip tard. That's another word for the dipstick and uh, that should tell me. Oh, oh, it's bad. Oh, I thought I could do it. Oh no. What happened? 
I spilled all over my valve cover. Oh no. And I'm so trembly anyways that this is just a horrible idea. Here's what I'm gonna do instead. I'm gonna cover this section up with a rag. I'm gonna try to get a filter in there. We'll see if that works. I said, I said filter, I meant funnel, I promise. I'm not that dumb. Okay, so after checking the dipstick, it does need a little bit more, but definitely not a full quart. Three hours later. Okay, uh, dudes and dudettes, after a very, very long intermission, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, looking for these. Five by 100, six millimeter wheel spacers. The three SDM 0.06s will not fit on the front without them. I called everywhere whilst looking for them, trying to find a retailer local that would have them. Of course, they have like tractor parts or Chevy GM specific parts. You know, it's Iowa, very, very few Volkswagens, just European and cars in general here. But with that on like that, we should be able to actually clear the brake caliper. That way the wheel doesn't hit it. I also forgot what a miserable process this is, trying to use actual like lug bolts, not lug nuts, actual bolts that go into here while using a spacer that floats around. Almost impossible, actually. Come on, baby. Stay with me. Stay with me, girl. Come on. All I have to do is get one threaded in, and now we're good. Okay, now that all the wheels are hand tight on there, we can officially lower the car back down onto the ground. And uh, I'll go around, of course, torque your lugs, ladies and gents, very, very important. You do not want your wheel flying off on the interstate or the highway or even in a residential area. It's not a fun experience. After we lower it down, we'll be able to check the oil level, make sure it's still good. Now that it'll be on a much more level surface, it's time to lower this baby down. Okay, now that the vehicle's lowered down to a nice level surface yet again, I wouldn't recommend checking your oil level when your vehicle's on jack stands just because it's really hard for you to jack up your vehicle and make sure it's gonna be completely level. I mean, unless you wanna get a level out, then, you know, be my guest. So in looking at the dipstick, it looks to be just at the full mark, which is pretty good, however, Keep in mind, we do have to get the engine actually circulating the oil again. So I'm gonna open up the garage door. We're gonna crank her over and uh, let it run for a few minutes. And then once it gets up to operating temp, I'll shut it back off. We can check the oil level again, make sure it's good. And we'll be able to go out for our first rip. <laughs> seems to be behaving pretty well. I checked underneath already, no leaks, so we're all good there. In the meantime, though, all right, we have officially hit operating temp. Pull the dipstick out one more time, wipe it all off, and we'll check it. Oh, dude, that is not where I want it to be. <laughs> So since the engine started circulating the oil, of course it's gonna fill all the nooks and crannies where there wasn't oil to begin with. So now it is a little bit low, but that's okay. I didn't use all the oil that I had. Add a little bit more oil and we should be good to go. All right, uh, it does look like six quarts was the magic number. Now, unfortunately, the GoPro still isn't charged enough to where we can go have a cruise together, but that's all right. We'll save that for another video entirely, right? I realized that this kind of turned into more of a tutorial video than anything else, but don't listen to me. I literally know nothing. I didn't go to school to work on cars. I just kind of do what it do, you know what I'm saying? So I do think that's gonna do it for this episode of Vlogging with Tuji. <laughs> if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button 
and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.